Hello everybody, this is Nellie DeVerlis with Vibe Talks Film Festival Edition. Today we are covering the Toronto International Film Festival by highlighting Scarborough. It is adapted from an award-winning novel that highlights the diverse neighborhood of Scarborough. Today we are speaking with acclaimed co-directors Sasha Nakai as well as, well as Rich Williamson and we are also speaking to award-winning author Catherine Hernandez. How are you both doing today? Great, thank you for having us. Catherine, are you able to give a brief overview of Scarborough? Uh, sure. It's um, a film that uh, follows the lives of three children during the course of a school year in the Kingston and Galloway lo um, area of Scarborough. That's good to hear. Sasha and Rich, I just want to know what made you decide to turn this novel into a film? Catherine was in the first student film I made about 13 years ago. <laughs> and also we worked together on a dance film six years ago, um, and we were paired together by the Toronto Relation International Film Festival to work together. And so when Catherine wrote her book, um, she really wanted the film to have a documentary approach. And uh, she approached us about working with her on turning it into a film. And the work was marvelous. Catherine, I wanted to speak about your own experiences growing up in Scarborough and how did that shape the film? Well, I've, I've been in uh, Scarborough uh, since I was 10 and I'm 43 now. So that just tells you like how much I love the East End. Um, went back and forth for some time when I was um, in school. And, you know, because of internalized racism, I felt kind of embarrassed to be from Scarborough. Um, but then because of unfortunate events, my daughter and I had to relocate back to Scarborough and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm starting from square one, um, you know, where we were in precarious housing, living hand to mouth, and I was uh, uh, operating a home daycare. And uh, just because of that, um, the, the precarious nature of our lives, uh, I was realizing that there was a story to be told about like frontline workers who were uh, trying to meet the needs of a community. And so to that, I, I you know, it, it ended up being a love letter to the film and then a, um, a love letter to the community through a book, and then a love letter to the community through a film. Um, and so it's, it's just been a magical journey so far, and I'm hoping that everyone from Scarborough feels uh, really seen and celebrated by watching the film. That's really endearing to hear. Um, along the lines of visions and making sure that, you know, collaborative working works well, Sasha and Rich, how, do you, how did you both manage to have that perfect blend of creativity to be able to work together. Mm, I wouldn't call it perfect. <laughs> it's always a work in progress. Um, you know, creative collaboration is always a dance, right? It's never, um, yeah, it's always a dance between different people. And, uh, you know, Rich and I had, we're, we're partners in life and we often work together as well. So I think being, having that closeness of, actually living together uh, allowed for a lot of very candid conversations, a lot of um, a lot of openness that might be harder to achieve if you weren't very close with someone you were collaborating with. Mm -hmm. And along the lines of that, how did you manage that work-life balance between you two? <laughs> did we? Did, did we? Did, <laughs> did we? <laughs> um, it was very challenging to have a work-life balance. In fact, we did not have one um, working on this project because it was a micro budget. Um, I was working a full-time job and doing this on evenings and weekends for the longest time until I, I realized I just couldn't do that anymore. And it was very challenging. Um, we, we really did our best, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say we had a work-life balance during the making of this project. Yeah. <laughs> We had to shoot on weekends too because the kids are going to school during the week and so that entire week leading up was always casting prepping for the weekend you know um doing storyboards it, it just it was endless and so um yeah finding that balance was quite difficult but mm. interesting. we made it thank work you. <laughs> thank you um so now back to Catherine. i wanted to talk about the characters a little bit more um, working with children and writing for children often speaks to our inner selves. So like, I wanted to know which characters spoke to your inner child? All of them did. Um, uh, definitely uh, Laura's, uh, her, the way in which she survives difficult things by just being in her imagination. 
um, is something that I really connect with. Uh, being being celebrated for who he is is something that I, it's more like something I wanted to write into being. Uh, because I know that a lot of uh, queer Filipinx kids don't have that reality. Um, and uh, as uh, for Sylvie, uh, what what does uh, a writer in the making look like? And that's Sylvie. Um, and you see that more in the book than in the film. But Sylvie is definitely someone who I imagined as she got older became a, a writer. That's how I imagined, um, you know, in, in the book um, that you're seeing like a writer in the making. And um I really wanted to to uh, capture that. So uh, those are the parts of, of those of those children that I connect with. However, they really my hope is, you know, when you're a writer that they live and breathe on their own. And what's really lovely to hear is that the audiences feel like they were looking at the characters right before their very eyes uh, while watching it. So that that's uh, that, that has been very, very encouraging. Yeah, that's very insightful. Thank you for letting me know. And I'm just going to open this last question up to everybody. What can audiences expect to see next from you guys? At least for us, right now, we're really looking forward to resting because <laughs> we only just finished the film, I would say two weeks ago. And so if you think about it, it's been a four year marathon and, and we're going to rest. Um, I did uh, supervise produce on a comedy series that's coming out at the end of the month called Next Stop. Um, and we do have some other projects in the works. Yeah. And uh, for me, I um, ha I'm in the works of uh, finishing my uh, my next novel and the novel after that, and then um, some screenwriting projects and imminent disaster from uh, Audible uh, will be released sometime this year, which is a sketch comedy show. Uh, but on in audio. So yeah, so the, uh, all really good things, a very blessed and abundant time. And I'm sure everyone is looking forward to seeing everything you all are doing. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today for this interview. We are eternally grateful for you, Catherine, Rich, and Sasha for speaking with us today. For more festival coverage, visit us at vibe105to.com as well as on our socials at vibe105to. Thank you and see you soon.